I think, like anything, it's almost like the internet. There's a lot of very good stuff, and there's probably a lot of stuff that's not so good. Um, broadly, I encourage reading, though, um, immensely. Uh, I find it very, very insightful. And I encourage reading with a pen in your hand as well. Uh, in other words, turn them into books of study, underline things, hash them, and reread them. Um, don't, it's not a novel. You're not just going on a journey and being told a story and that's it. You sh get, become part of the narrative and really h highlight things that are relevant to you. It's amazing as I've developed and I've reread re books that I previously thought highly relevant parts and later on I've reread the book and different elements were more relevant now. So it was almost like I'd s assumed and accepted those. They'd become part of me and were unnoteworthy and the new things were now triggering um, highlight points. So read, but read with a pen and scribble in it. Um, and then if there's anything really interesting, type it up and capture it on a Word document that really grabbed you as an experience that sort of sealed you and, and your thought around it. So journalizing, blogging, so I run a blog, I actually run a virtual private network for all my students as well. I find the whole aspect of teaching what I seek to learn very, very useful. Those of you that don't seek to be teachers or still early in your learning, capture your notes as if you are a student. Blog, leave a trail. It's like Hansel and Gretel. Um, drop your crumbs all the way along. You can find your way back and many times you will have to step back to go forward again. So certainly do all those things. Measure. You can't improve that which you don't measure. You know, I tell the story about Fat Phil. Um, who was a chap who didn't want to uh, change his diet and didn't want to um, exercise, but he wanted to lose weight. You would have thought that he could have nowhere to go with those set of rules. I don't want to specifically change how I eat. I like how I eat. I don't want to. And he was an IT guy, and you know, he just set up a, he, he's got a spreadsheet with his eventual objective and where he was there. And he said, I'm going to have a very moderated, I don't want anything extreme, I'm not, you know, but I do want to do this. And all he did, uh, he had a, an overperformance band and an underperformance band as well that tracked him. So he almost had like a Bollinger band to his gold weight. He said, any time I'm overperforming, I'm going to specifically binge. And any time, you know, I'm underperforming, I'm going to uh, tighten my act up together. Um, and all he did was drink a pint of water every morning and had a really forensically good scale. Uh, and after he'd had a pee after a pint of water, he would measure himself at the exact same time every morning and he plotted those uh, graphs. Just by triggering his subconscious mind, he continued to assert, because he made his objective in 18 months, um, he must have done certain things, but he never noticed that he did anything that brought his weight down. But the fact that he was concentrating so detailed fashion and was weighing himself every morning and was drinking his pint of water and uh, having his pee and taking his measurement at the same time every day was notifying the rest of his system, particularly your subconscious mind, that this is something that you've determined to measure. And that, by definition, probably made him make passive choices he was not even conscious of. He may have climbed a staircase instead of waited for the lift once or twice. He may have um, said, look, I'm feeling okay, I don't need to order the dessert this time. He, we don't really know, but the point is the measurement process and committing to it on an extended basis and signaling to himself what he wanted did give him the outcome. So I think that's quite an incredible story. So you've got to measure something you want to improve because how else can you know if it's improved? And it's not just about, yeah, but the P&L, if it's a good big number in there is enough. No, what trades? And the more detailed you get, the more forensic you get, with what are your average risk rewards, how many were winners, you start chunking it down into real piecemeal understanding. That's when you start to treat this as a business. And that's when you start to be credible. <laughs>